as I said, one of the books is called The Story Tree. Now, you may or may not know that the stories in The Story Tree were stories that were told to The Story Tree by the birds. And this story tonight is called The Softly Spoken Shark. And it was told to the story tree by a sandy and salty seagull on a steadily saturating Saturday. The softly spoken shark was so very sad. His hiss and his snap and his bite were too gentle for anyone to take any notice of him. How will I ever be a feared and ferocious fish if no one notices me, he thought. Such a sad sob escaped his mouth but it was so soft that it was not heard by anyone. No one, that is, except for Petronella Porpoise. Petronella had a big heart. Some fish said her heart was as big as a whale's heart, but I think they were exaggerating a bit. But Petronella hated to see any ocean creature unhappy. So she asked the softly spoken shark, whose name was Stupenda Shark, why he was so sad. And the softly spoken shark, Stupenda, sighed again and softly started to tell Petronella Porpoise about his troubles. A shark should be ferocious and feared, he softly said. But no one takes any notice of me. Why, they don't even hear me, he sobbed. I'm a failure as a shark. I'm too soft. Petronella Porpoise could see Stupenda's perceived problem. She swam up close to him and said, Stupenda, it all depends on your point of view. What do you mean? asked Stupenda, his curiosity aroused. Just because you're a shark, it doesn't automatically follow that you have to be ferocious and feared. Well, all the sharks I know are ferocious and feared, said Stupenda, the softly spoken shark. But there are many, many sharks in the ocean. Do you know all of them? No, said Stupenda, I suppose I don't know all of them. If you knew that a shark was huge, I mean really big. Would you think that that shark would be ferocious and feared? asked Petronella Porpoise. Certainly I would, said the softly spoken shark stupenda. Now, if you knew of a shark that was so big it was called a whale shark, would you think it was a ferocious and feared shark? asked Petronella. Certainly, of course, and definitely, said stupenda, getting quite excited. That would be a very ferocious shark indeed, and tremendously feared. Petronella Porpoise smiled at the softly spoken shark. Oh, you think so? Well, in actual fact, there is a whale shark in the ocean, and it's a very gentle and softly spoken fish. Not a bit ferocious, and certainly not feared. Well, Stupenda the softly spoken shark was astounded. A shark so big it was called a whale shark, and yet it was a gentle creature and was very softly spoken. So Stupenda thanked Petronella Porpoise and he swam away, supremely satisfied that he was just as he should be, a softly spoken shark. So there you are, you see, we should all be happy with who we are and not want to be something we're not because it never works when you try and be something you're not. It only works when you try and be the best you you can be. Now, I have another book called Angels with Attitude and it's a different look at angels because Many people think that angels just lie around on clouds all day and play trumpets and harps and things. But actually, angels have a lot of jobs to do. There are a lot of angels out there. And when, when we're born, we're all given a guardian angel. But there's also lots of other angels out there that we can call on for help. Because angels are awesome. And you can always ask the angels for help. This one is called, this story is called The Roly Poly Angel. And as I said, it's in my book, Angels with Attitude. The roly-poly angel had a laugh so loud that it bounced around heaven all day. Once the roly-poly angel had begun to laugh, all the other angels would be clouded in laughter all day. It would ring in their ears and bounce off their heads and bang and swing and sway off their wings. Peals of roly-poly laughter would last way into the night and you could even hear it as the moon tiptoed across the sky to let the sun shine through for a bright new day. Nobody minded because it made them feel good to be bathed in laughter. It was very infectious because they would all begin to laugh along with it. Heaven was always a pretty happy place anyway and this just made it sound happy in a big way. But one day when the roly-poly angel tried to let go a laugh at a particularly funny joke she had been telling herself, she opened her mouth 
but no sound came out. No laughter, no speech, nothing, not even a whisper. She couldn't even cough. Maybe I don't have my laugh buds in gear, she thought. So she tried again. No, nothing. It's true, I can't laugh anymore, she thought. Maybe I have used up all my laughter and I'll never be able to laugh again. The roly-poly angel was sad. Pretty soon the other angels realised something was different. Heaven didn't feel right. There was no roly-poly laughter to laugh along with. Roly-poly angel couldn't explain it to them because she had no voice and couldn't make a sound. The curious angel was curious. Now what has happened to roly-poly angel's voice, she wondered, because she expected herself to find out. Just flap your left wing for yes and flap your right wing for no, she told the roly-poly angel as she looked down her throat. Did you have any voice last night? Roly-poly angel flapped her left wing. That means yes, said curious angel. Okay, did you eat anything that doesn't agree with you? The roly-poly angel flapped her right wing. No, said curious angel. Did you sleep in a different part of heaven last night? Roly-poly angel flapped her left wing. Ah, now we're getting somewhere, said curious angel. And while you were asleep, did you notice anything strange? Asked Curious Angel. Roly-poly Angel had been out late last night and had slept on an unfamiliar cloud. She was so tired that she couldn't make it all the way back to her usual cloud. She hadn't really noticed anything much until halfway through the night when she'd woken up feeling uncomfortable. She had been so tired that she'd been snoring with her mouth open. Did you sleep with your mouth open? Asked Curious Angel. Roly-poly angel flapped her left wing. Yes, said Curious Angel. I thought so. Curious Angel beckoned to a sunbeam. The sunbeam shone its strong light down into Roly-poly Angel's throat. Ah, now I can see why you can't speak, she said. She pulled a feather out of one of her own wings and poked it down Roly-poly Angel's throat. It tickled Roly-poly Angel, who began to shake with laughter. Silent laughter. Her side shook and Curious Angel had to pull out the feather. As she did so, hundreds of tiny, shiny spots of light flew out of Roly-Poly Angel's throat. Roly-Poly Angel tried to speak, but nothing came out. She tried again, still nothing. Curious Angel looked down Roly-Poly Angel's throat again. Aha, she said, nearly there. She reassured Roly-Poly Angel. Just one more step. She began to tap her knee. A gentle rhythmic tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Rolly Polly Angel was puzzled. But just then, a tiny hummingbird flew down and landed right on Curious Angel's knee, just where Curious Angel had been tapping out her beat. Open wide, she told Rolly Polly Angel. We need a hummingbird's wing to start your voice again. The hummingbird flew ever so carefully down inside Rolly Polly Angel's throat. With its wings whirring, it stroked the vocal cords in Roly-Poly Angel's throat. Suddenly, there was another noise above the sound of the hummingbird's wings. Roly-Poly Angel had begun to laugh, and this time, all heaven could hear it as it rocked and rolled around once again. Thank you, Curious Angel, for finding my voice. But what had happened to it? asked Roly-Poly Angel. Easy breezy sneezy, said Curious Angel. Last night, while you were snoring in your sleep, Hundreds of tiny fireflies mistook the warmth inside your throat for their soft sleeping cloud. So they did what tired fireflies do. They settled down on your tonsils and your vocal cords for a good night's sleep. There were so many of them lying on your vocal cords that they couldn't stretch and reverberate to make a sound. When I tickled them with the feather, it woke them up and they flew away. And now you can speak and laugh again. So there you are. You just never know what might happen from one day to the next. And that was Rolly Polly Angels snoring that allowed all those fireflies to go in and lie down on her vocal cords. You know, Hawaii is a microcosm of the world with people here from all over the world. And Noa Noa Hawaii is a microcosm of the traditional arts of the world with beautiful patterns from many countries. They've been in business for 38 years with wonderful Hawaii design petite clothing. Their hand-dyed and handmade clothes have patterns that are based on traditional kapa 
and tapa designs from Hawaii, Polynesia, Micronesia, Indonesia, even New Zealand and Africa. So check out all of the wonderful um, items that Noah Noah has on their website, which is www.noanoahawaii.com. So I'll be back next week, so bye for now.